Now we all know that a good sports coach needs to deliver a session that's fun, safe and educational. Well, how do you actually do that? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video about what makes a good sports coach. So I've put together six different qualities that I think a sports coach needs to bring into every session. And we're going to go through each one of those to help you become a better sports coach, to question some of the ways that you're delivering your sessions at the moment, and to hopefully lead this video with an opportunity to play around with different techniques, different strategies, which might help improve your sessions and improve you as a sports coach. Now that first one that we're going to talk about is so important, it's communication. Now I always break communication down into three different categories. As a sports coach, the first one is verbal communication. What words am I using? How clear am I talking? How long am I talking for? Really questioning myself, everything that's verbal, everything that I'm saying, even like the way I say it and how, how, how clear I'm making everything. Then I'll look at physical communication. How, what does my facial expression look like? How am I using my gestures? Am I is my body language showing positivity and um, showing a sort of a passion and a ro almost like that that role model approach of how how we should be approaching a session? How should the energy be within that session? And then finally, written communication skills. When I see coaches using whiteboards, encouraging the children to go and write their own little notes and the the topic titles clear and everybody can see what it is. It makes such a difference when you then are reviewing your, your session. You think, right, did the children understand what they were meant to be learning today? Well, hopefully they did because they had to keep coming back to the whiteboard, which was talking about that particular topic. It's a really good way for you as a sports coach to get that topic title across. I don't think that either one of those in particular is more important than the other. And you're going to have different opportunities and different participants, different types of sessions where one communication style will be better than the other and that's fine but what i want you to really think about is which one of those three are you not really doing so much and that you could do a little bit more is it that you've got all the 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 detail there you've got the the words right you know what you're saying but you don't physically have that energy you're not doing the demonstrations at, at the right level you're not coming across super positive maybe you need to go away and think right okay i need to bring a bit more energy into this session because the, the participants will feed off of your energy if you're bringing really good energy they're going to bounce off that and it's going to really bring a lot of positive sort of uh, a positive environment around your session which helps you to to deliver a be uh, better session now the next one is organization and sports coaches you know sometimes they're really organized others they're not and i'm not saying you have to be literally meticulous in every bit of detail but i guarantee you it will help okay because if you're currently go get into a session five minutes before it starts and you're just throwing a few cones down the kids are coming out and you haven't even really set up yet it's just poor it's not the level that you probably want to be delivering at so i'm going to think about right how can we as sports coaches be better organized? So we're going to talk about before, we're going to talk about in the session, and then we're going to talk about after the session. So for me, before the session starts, I love to see a lesson plan. I want to see what that is. Now, even if it's just a, a, a little notes page, like you just, just made some notes, just something to show, right, this coach has spent five minutes really thinking about what they actually going to be learning in this session what's the warm-up going to be what's the main session how's it going to flow in, into a match i think that's really important before a session starts how can i be more organized well you can think about your actual session that you're going to be delivering you might want to think about the equipment that you've got in that session the space that you're going to be using the times what time you're going to be leaving to get to that session how early do you want to be there have you thought about the fact that it might be difficult to park because it's school pickup time? All those different aspects, just taking control of it. If, if you just say, oh, well, you know, it was 10 minutes away from my house, so I left 10 minutes before. Well, you didn't think about the fact that it was school pickup time. So take control of it. Leave 20 minutes early. Get there nice, nice and early. Just allows you to be fully set up and ready for your session so that then you go it, during the session it's easier to be organized because otherwise you're you're leaving yourself open to to more things going wrong because a decision you made like half an hour ago is still impacting you because you haven't been able to get on top of it now just to move into during the session if i'm organized i've already laid out my cones and if i'm clever my cones that or my space that i'm using for my warm-up 
will be a quick transition into a main session. For example, if, I, if my main session is a rectangle with thirds, well, my warm up could be a, 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 a game just using one of those thirds. So I'm using that one space for a ball manipulation warm up. And then when I move into my main session, I don't even need to pick any cones up because I've already got my, my thirds laid out and I was clever in the space that I use my warm up. Sometimes I see a coach, they'll, they'll have a, a warm up set up all the way over here and then they're gonna go and do a main session like the other side of the field and then the match is set up separately as well. Bring it all into one space and use that space effectively allows you to be more centrally located so you can just have all of your kit and equipment in one place and then you can just go from there and it makes it a lot easier you can think about how you're going to distribute the equipment once the children come out if i'm delivering a pe lesson i've got 30 hockey sticks to hand out i know i'm going to have an issue if i've got 30 children all going to one bag all trying to put pick out their best hockey stick whereas if i'm organized and i'm there on time i've already laid out 30 hockey sticks along the whole court and as the children have arrived they've been able to pick up a hockey stick and it just creates a nice flowing environment my bibs when i'm going into my matches have i already separated reds from blues from blacks or are they all in one in the bib bag and when i'm trying to sort out teams it, it slows me down that's another thing that you can sort out before and hopefully during the session you're thinking about the next thing that's going to happen you've already organized that sort of stuff so it takes away from impacting on the children even all the other bits around your session as well thinking about a, a first aid kit if there is a first aid issue where, where do you go if there's a fire alarm where do you go all of these other bits that necessarily don't ha don't impact the session, but just in case a fire alarm goes off, you know what to do, you know where to go. It just makes it so much easier for you as a coach. And I'd really encourage you to go away and think about those extra little details when it comes to your session planning. And then after a session finishes, now no coach wants to see all the kids off, look back at where their session was and see hundreds of different bits of equipment all over the place. And that just comes from, I think, poor organization. When I finish a hockey lesson, for example, I would have encouraged two um, hockey stick leaders to pick up all the hockey sticks, put them in the bag in the correct way. I would have had my tennis ball leaders who would be picking all the tennis balls up and putting them in the in the bucket. I'll be making sure that all, I've got a cone monitor, I'll have a bib monitor, right? And all these different people they get they get their jobs and they have to use they have to sort all of your equipment out before you even allow the children to leave the session. That means I can then take all the children to, to be seen off. And now I'm, I'm, I'm happy days. I turn back and I've got a bib bag to pick up and a hockey bag to pick up and a, and a, and a bucket of balls. Easy, go sort that out and I can go. That, that, there's, there's no glory in a coach turning back and thinking, oh, right, yeah, I need to be here for another 20 minutes, sorting it all out. Like, what's the point in that? Just be organized, get the kids to help you as well. And um, I think that will help you have a have a better experience as a coach as well because I, I just don't see how anybody can find that sort of stuff uh, fun to be honest at the end of a session let's give some responsibility back to the children and then finally you're just going to need to evaluate that session whether that's mentally or, or or with notes just looking back right what went well just make a list of everything that went well development areas what didn't go so well, well my behavior management wasn't quite there didn't deal with this situation well not sure this child developed the the skill that i wanted them to so i could think about that just just go away literally two things what went well development areas and just come up with that and then if you've got people around you mentors or anything like that go to them look i had this session it was really good but in particular this happened i didn't know what to do and i've thought about it i'm still struggling can you help me when you're organized like that it just makes such difference because if you're going to be developing as a coach and you're going to be you're going to become, you're going to accelerate your learning. When you organize like that, you're going to accelerate your learning so much quicker because not only are you just learning from the mistakes, but you're actively, you're proactively going out and, and learning by approaching people. It might be through even like watching videos like this. There's lots of content out there about how you can become a better sports coach. So, you know, find that information, bring it into your sessions, and hopefully it will, it will develop you moving forwards. Adaptability is my next quality. Now, I cannot tell you how many times I've planned for a session and it just, I've turned up to the, to the school or to the evening session and just like nothing's as I was expecting it to be. And that might be 
you are expecting to be on the field and it's completely waterlogged. So there's no other fields in the area that are waterlogged, but this particular field is just really bad for some reason. So all of a sudden you've got 20 kids that are all coming out and you haven't got any space to use on the field. Well, what are you going to do? You might have to go in the hall, you might have to go on the playground, but you know, the, the children are all going to be wearing boots. All of a sudden you're going to have to adapt and that's fine, but you just got to be calm in those situations. Think about right, what's going to work. How can I make it work? How can I adapt my session plan to allow this to work? Very simple for you, but in the moment it's going to throw you off and when the reality of what's happening doesn't meet your expectation of what was going to happen. It can throw you off sometimes. So just stay calm. Take a second to think about, right, what's the best way to deal with this and go away with it. It could be you, you turn up to your session and you've left your, your all your balls in at home and you completely forgot to bring them. Yeah, we can be as organized as possible, but we've, we're still going to make mistakes. So what are you going to do in that situation? Well, who could you speak to? Is there anybody who could bring some equipment down for you? Is there somebody running a session next to you and you could maybe bring get a couple of their balls like whatever it is you can maybe there's someone next to you and they've got some equipment you can borrow and you're going to again have to adapt your session because you haven't got the amount of equipment that you thought there's lots of times when you're going to have to be adaptable and if you're a coach who just wants everything to be exactly as planned you're going to struggle because especially like where I work in primary schools quite often things are very different so to what you expect them to be just be aware of that and think about it when you're when you are going into your sessions fourth quality is player development you've got to be aware as a coach about how your participants are developing you've got to have a clear topic title so if i'm doing a netball lesson i'm not just doing a netball lesson i'm doing a passing lesson or i might even go into more detail and go passing into space or it might be um quick passing like go into finer detail and then like i said earlier with the communication write that up get it somewhere so that the children know what they're learning in today's session and then you can go from that and you can encourage them to think about right what do i need to do if i'm passing into space today what does the person who's not on the ball need to do oh they need to be moving into the space great when i see someone moving into the space what do i need to do all of these questions can start coming out and we keep bringing it back to the development side of are what they actually learning today it's great when it's fun and safe but if it's not educational you're missing one of the three major points as a sports coach so go away and think about right, what they learning and then once they understand what they're meant to be learning then it's about right have they actually got better at that and how do they get better at it they're going to get better by you by you giving them time to practice you need to give them the right activity and you need to give them the right time to practice i see so many coaches who set up a fantastic activity where children would learn a lot they go into it and then within like 30 seconds or a minute they pause the game and right let's let, let's stop there and talk about it. suddenly like you're giving them about a minute to practice and then sometimes a coach can be talking for like two or three minutes and then they go back into it for another 30 seconds or a minute and then it stops again like we need to give more children time to develop these motor skills that they're learning from young ages it's the motor skills um, that, that they need to develop the fundamental movement skills that allow them to learn their throwing, catching, their, their skipping, their running, all of these different skills that we need to learn as children. But quite often, children don't pick up on these skills because they don't have enough time to practice them. And you, as an educator, as a sports coach, thinking about right, these development areas, how are you developing your, your participants? Yes, they understand it, but now am I giving them time to practice? Am I being able to give them little pointers? on an individual basis, which is going to help them learn that skill a little bit better. Fifth quality is discipline and fairness. You as a sports coach, ultimately at times are going to be having, yeah, there's going to be little games in your session. They get, you're going to be giving children the opportunity to be competitive. Now, whenever something gets competitive, it needs to be fair and there needs to be consequences if those aren't following the rules. Okay. So hopefully you can lay out the expectations clear enough that you don't have to lean on this particular quality too much but without it you could end up with a group that are, are not focusing on what you want them to be doing and that group management is really important for you to get it a for it to be safe if you can't manage the group it's not safe and although some will be having fun by being silly others will not be having fun at all so you're missing the second one and then educational wise you're going to really struggle to move into any education because 
because it's not um, safe and fun. It's not the right environment. So how can you do that? Well, I think one of the most important things is to have clear expectations for your participants. My, very simple ones from my side. If you haven't got anything nice to say, don't say it. If you haven't got anything nice to do, don't do it. And um, uh, if you haven't got anything nice to say, don't say it. If you haven't got anything nice to do, don't do it. From there, you should be able to sort of have those expectations. If I hear you say something which isn't nice, or if I hear you, or if I see you do something which isn't nice, I'm going to give you a warning and then depend on the, the behavior management that you might be using in your school or in your company or whatever it is, but for me, my go-to would be, that's a warning. If you do it again, you're going to have to sit out for 10 seconds. I don't want to punish my children by going, right, you've been naughty once without a warning. You're sitting out. And sometimes you see like, a coach will put a, a, a sit a child out for like five, 10 minutes. And it's like, that, that's not the right way to deal with it. So 10 seconds out, they know where your line is. You, as soon as they're being silly, they're going up to your line, but it's okay. As soon as they go past that line, you have to bring them back in line and that, that is your warning they come back down if they go silly again right that's a 10 second sit out okay they come back if it just keeps happening okay you need to be planned and you need to know what the consequences are so does that go 30 seconds does that end go two minutes does that go you speak to parents does that mean you then get removed from the session like you, you can't just go into that session hoping that everyone's going to be really well behaved it doesn't always happen so have those expectations and um, that's the discipline side. But then the fairness, you're going into a, a little 1v1 game and they're working in a particular square. You need to be really fair. But if a, if a child is, say they're dribbling a ball in hockey and if it's like a, a 1v1, you just try and get the ball and keep it. If I take my ball out of the area, even just by that much, that I've, I've taken my ball out of the area. There needs to be a rule. If, you, if the ball goes out of the area, the other person gets it and they get a, a two seconds, two seconds to, to get, find a space and play. Whatever it is, you need to be thinking, right, in this game that I'm playing right now, what could go wrong? Well, the ball could go out of the area. Um, the ball could go too high. It could be, you need to bring in certain rules to make sure that it doesn't happen and then just being really clear on what's fair the ball goes out this happens if this person gets the ball this happens whatever it is and make sure it's fair all the time and my sit of quality to what makes a really good sports coach is a passion and enthusiasm you as a sports coach are here for a reason you probably enjoyed sport as a young person you maybe had a role model who, who you looked up to and they got you into sport and it made you a passionate sports person well now is your opportunity to bring that passion bring that enthusiasm into your own sessions to then pass that down to the next generation now for me as a coach when i'm coaching i'm always trying to catch in rather than catching out where am i focusing my time is it on the 90% of the class who have come down and sat in front of me very quietly and nicely or am I going to give my attention to the 10% of the class who are still sort of slowly coming in All right now if I focus my time on the 10% I'm catching them out right you're doing the wrong thing you need to come and sit down not ideal whereas I've got 90% of the class doing the right thing oh fantastic well done to my 90% here doing the right thing well done they're getting the attention these guys now think, oh, I want to get attention, so they come and join in. It creates this, pos it's this positive mindset of let's bring a passion and enthusiasm. And when they're doing their session, it's like, oh, fantastic, well done, this is really good. Oh, can we stop everybody? Can we watch little Jimmy being his frog? Like, all of this stuff that you can do as a coach is to bring passion and enthusiasm, you use your body, use your voice. And through doing that, I believe that your participants are going to really enjoy your sports sessions more and hopefully they they go home and it's one of their favorite hours of the week and they can't wait to come back because it's such a positive enthusiastic passionate place where everybody's developing and enjoying sport trust me i know it's not easy being a sports coach at times but when you take these certain qualities into your sessions it will help you develop i want you to go leave this video having made some notes on what are you doing at the moment which you think is good Think about those positives. What are those development areas? Have I said something in this video and you think, actually, I probably need to work a little bit more on that. I need to go and be a little bit more organized. I need to, whatever it is, take that into your next few sessions. See what the impact is. Do you suddenly find that 
the children's behavior is much better because you've changed as a coach. Because I always find when, if you've ever got a, a group and you're, you're particularly struggling with, I guarantee you there's someone out there in the world who could come to that group and get them doing exactly what you want them to do. And, I, and so that, if that is the case and somebody else can come and do that, it's probably me. I need to change something that I'm doing. And that's not easy to do. And other people can have years of experience, but there's, there's little tweaks that you can make to your coaching to make the, your sessions better, to make sure that your children are having a fun, safe and, and educational environment. If you can get all three of those, you're on your way to becoming a very, very good sports coach. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please do like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.